Yes. Well, I didn't expect you'd be pleased to see me. Hardly anyone ever is. I got your letter. I didn't know what to make of it. I read things far too quickly to ever understand them. Old and dying. Looks very much like yodeling when you string it together. <laughs> I mean, I didn't know you were still alive. <laughs> I dropped everything. I took a train a thousand miles. I got here as quickly as I could. I, 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 I hailed a cab at the station, you know, and I gave my bag to the driver. I told him, step on it. <laughs> I mean, I was in a rush. <laughs> Yes, well, well, it's been a long time, uh, a long time. You look, um, well, my God, you weren't exaggerating, were you? <laughs> no. As for me, I haven't changed all that much, really. I've got these little pieces of skin sticking to my body, you know, under my arms and such like, yeah. But other than that, yeah, no, I haven't changed all that much at all, really. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Let's not talk about anything depressing, all right? Oh, do you want to be cremated? <laughs> There's this woman, you know, across the street. She's been sitting, looking out at her window for three hours now. God, don't people have anything better to do with their lives? <laughs> oh yeah, now I remember. They don't. Well, I've been here three days now. <laughs> my pants are getting wrinkled. What am I supposed to wear to your service? <laughs> I, um, I thought we should discuss your organs. <laughs> well, I thought you might want to consider donating something to the cause of science. <laughs> well, I can't imagine what. <laughs> fine, fine, fine. Just think about it. But don't think too long. If you don't sign the forms, they can't touch you. <laughs> Otherwise, they'd be stripping people for perks like cars. <laughs> don't put salt on that before you've tasted it. That's very annoying. This isn't a restaurant. <laughs> I don't know why you're always looking at me like that. All right, all right, I haven't visited you in 40 years. I was busy. Here, have some salt, all right? Happy? I don't know why you hate me so much. I mean, I'm your nephew, for God's sakes. Is it too much to ask that you just pretend? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, it's just that, I don't know, the longer you stay alive, not that you should die, you know. But, I don't know, the more you get to know me, the worse I seem to get. Oh, all right. You don't have to like me, but you bloody well better like my cookie. <laughs> I just thought uh, I'd go through some of your things. I was thinking we might have one of those estate auctions, you know? <laughs> yes, let's see. Mm. Can't imagine we get very much. But you never know. It might help with the expenses. You'd be surprised how much an urn costs these days. 
You know, ever since... Oh, what is it? Is it this? Oh, I have to wear this. I'm sensitive to dust. <laughs> you know, ever since I arrived here, you've been behaving as me, towards me as if I've uh, committed a crime or something. I really resent that. I mean, I may not have been the best relation in the world, but I'm the only one you've got, so... And, and I'd really appreciate it if you'd stop acting so suspicious of me all the time. <laughs> Here, sign this. It's your will. You're leaving everything to me. I spoke with a funeral director. <laughs> now, uh, you don't mind recorded music, do you? Ah, no, of course you wouldn't. I mean, not to be cruel, but practically speaking, you'll be the only person there who won't have to listen to it. <laughs> I took the liberty of choosing something for you. Don't worry, it's very sad. In fact, I become a little choked up every time I think how sad I'm going to be when I hear it. Oh, dear. Okay, well, let's see. Oh, I had this lovely idea about the ashes. I thought I'd mix you in with some soil, and we'd plant an amaryllis. Would you like that? Well, what's the matter? I think it's a perfectly enchanting notion. I think uh, you've eaten enough there. <laughs> You're not going to fit in the box. <laughs> Look at her. She's still sitting there. <laughs> Who's her taxidermist, I wonder? Ah, <laughs> uh, spring. <laughs> well, hey, you should see there's this one, le one man with a uh, wooden leg. He's limping through the slush down there. <laughs> Ah, oh, spring. I used to love this season as a kid, you know? I didn't have to go skating anymore. Oh, you can't imagine what that looked like. <laughs> I had these white lace-ups, you know, and a white muff. Oh, I was so unhappy. <laughs> not because I looked like a girl, because I wasn't one. <coughs> I'm not going to explain that. I never actually skated, of course, you know? I just, I just sort of skidded around the ice like Bambi. Or I'd, you know, stand on the side and watch snow falling all around. Watch the other parents pushing their precious children across the ice. Wishing we would all just melt. I hated winter. Still do. When you look out at the city in winter, you can actually see it breathing. It's like some strange hibernating beast just dreaming of spring and grinding its teeth. Oh, that reminds me. What do you want me to do with your dentures?
job? No, of course you didn't. I left my job to come here. Yeah. I had a very important position at a very important bank. <laughs> not a very important position. And not a very important bank, but I left it all the same. <laughs> and I, I don't think it would be an exaggeration to say that I was accomplished. I had <laughs> friends, lots of <laughs> well, acquaintances. I was somebody, though. I didn't live in this stupid town anymore. I was urbane, witty. Well, perhaps not witty, but droll. I was droll. I ate in restaurants where they served things you wouldn't even dream of eating. Portions so tiny, people never went to the bathroom. You understand? Yeah. <laughs> and when people died, which in my circle was not very often, they had the decency to disappear into a hospital and anesthetize themselves into oblivion, saving the rest of us the uh, excruciating discomfort of having to participate. And don't take that the wrong way. <laughs> I'm not trying to say I don't want to be here. Of course I want to be here. In the first place, it's my duty. And in the second place, well, let's just say it's my duty and leave it at that. I'm not one of those who abdicates his responsibilities. And I'm not going to dump you on the state either. I don't believe in that. You're my problem. And by problem, I don't mean, yeah, you know what I mean. All right, so you don't want to be compared to a candle. Fine. You're probably right anyway. I mean, why on earth should we compare ourselves to anything? I loathe metaphors, actually. What a stupid idea. I mean, you're, you're not a candle anyway. You're an old woman with dirty hair. If you were a candle, well. <laughs> you know, there's not a single picture of me anywhere. In all of your things, there's not a single picture of me. I mean, I can understand you disavowing my parents. <laughs> Who wouldn't? <laughs> but me, why me? <laughs> it's just, it, I, what happened to all those pictures that I sent you over the years? You must have destroyed them. What about that one of me with the monks? That was adorable. Hmm. This, is, this is unbearable. It's as if you erased me from your mind. All those years, I thought you had forgotten about me. You actually had. <laughs> this knitting of yours, is it a long-term project? Oh, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to do the laundry sometimes, you know. Do you want me to walk around naked? I found this among your things. I thought it was quite chic. My God, I can't believe it's summer already. And she's still sitting there. Huh. Uh, you should see these kids down there tossing a ball back and forth. <laughs> They'll probably break somebody's window. Uh, I much preferred the indoors when I was a kid, you know? Yeah, I used to play for hours and hours with a portable hair dryer hood. <laughs> oh, yeah. I used to wear it so that I could receive messages from outer space. <laughs> I would explain to the aliens my life at home. It wasn't easy. <laughs> I've got an infection in my throat, you know. Oh. Eh, don't worry. It's probably just cancer of the esophagus. <laughs> well, we've all got to die of something. Don't we? <laughs> yeah. I used to smoke, you know. But, uh, yeah, I, I quit the day Mother died. I only did it to, uh, to annoy her. It was really hard to quit. I was really addicted to annoying her. <laughs> I put my last cigarette out in her ashes. Uh, yes. Now, what became of you, though, by the way, that you couldn't make it to the funeral? I mean, I was a ter be terrible nephew, but you were a dreadful aunt. Yeah. You know, I don't even think that you sent me a birthday card once. Not in all that time. <laughs> Until this year. Yeah. I didn't tell you, but I took the liberty of sending myself a birthday card from you. Of course, it hasn't arrived. Why should it? Oh, wait a minute. There's the postman right now. Delivering nothing. Some things never change. Well, today is my birthday. <laughs> of course, I never dreamed I'd be spending it with you. <laughs> but then again, I never dreamed I'd be spending it with anyone. So there you are. <laughs> yeah, not many people know the actual day of my birth. It's not the sort of information I'd casually share with a friend, even if I had one. Yes, you're probably wondering, how is it possible for a person to go through their entire life without accumulating even a single friend, even inadvertently? It isn't easy making yourself so resoundingly unpopular. You really have to work at it. Of course, I don't like people, so that's a good start, I suppose. <laughs> and I don't mean I can take them or leave them. I mean, I don't like them. Children, of course, yeah, they're just a smaller, stickier variety. Less apt to talk uh, postmodernism, which is uh, a large part of their charm. But real people, I mean, adults, you know, before they wither away and die, they exude this sort of sickening mist from their pores. Yeah. Carbon dioxide mixed with desperation. Oh, look, there's a woman pushing a pram down there. Can you imagine having your whole life ahead of you? Oh, that poor little creature. Oh. You know, there's only one day that I wish I could live over again. Yeah, one perfect day from beginning to end. I, I couldn't have been more than seven years old at the time. I snuck, I crept upstairs into the attic and hid there the entire day with a cat. Listening to mother's heart. I could hear her downstairs running from room to room. Where's my little baby? Where have you got to, you little rascal, you? Calling for me, trying to find me. In a few hours, she was calling neighbors and friends. Where do you think he is? Do you think I should go looking for him? <clears throat> By the time father came home in the evening, she was actually weeping. Oh, what if something's happened to him? He hasn't come back. You know, I think I cried a little myself. At, later at night, they went out searching for me. And then I snuck downstairs and I crept into bed. Oh, uh, I imagine the look of joy on their faces to find me asleep. Their precious boy safe at last. Oh, and their vows together to be better parents, to love me more, and never let me out of their sight again. Oh, I think those are the most beautiful dreams I ever had. In the morning, I could hear mother downstairs. So I raced downstairs. And I looked in and I could see her sitting there in the kitchen with the cat in her lap and a smile on her face. And as she looked up at me, tears welled in her eyes. She said, we were so worried. We thought poor Kitty had run away forever. <laughs> <laughs> the next day I killed the cat. <laughs> 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 
that disturb you? <laughs> Don't worry, I didn't really kill him. Although God knows why not. I think I couldn't get the washing machine started. <laughs> <laughs> what is it about pets that makes them so much more lovable than people? I mean, if I... I mean, if I licked my genitals, I'd be sent to jail. <laughs> I guess it's... I guess it's their total dependence on us, huh? It's the closest we get to being God. Why are you putting that makeup on? Why don't you let the mortician do that? I've been concerned about your health these last few days, you know. It seems to be improving. <laughs> yeah, don't look at me like that. I've got your shopping list here. Don't you think Christmas wrapping is a little optimistic? <laughs> oh, look, the post office is on strike again. I thought they were on strike. I still haven't received my package. Oh, I enrolled in a correspondence course. <laughs> Health in the home. <laughs> I reread your letter again, you know, the other day. You remember, Auntie? The letter you sent me all that time ago? The one that brought me here? The one that said, I'm dying? I mean, not that I'm holding you to your word or anything, you know, it's just... You know, it seems to me the kind of thing one doesn't change their mind about. I mean, Father, the day he died, you would have known this if you had been there, he was very definite about it. He just sat down in his big old armchair and said, I'm going to die now. And he did. Of course, he shot himself. But... <laughs> it just seems, you know, it's like something you feel inside. It's like an instinct, a sort of a, a sixth sense. So. You know, it occurred to me the other day, just out of the blue. Of course, you're doing this for me. <coughs> you're staying alive for me. Now, I mean, if you want to stay alive, eating pudding and whatnot, that's one thing. But if you're doing this out of some, uh, let's say, notion that I desire your company, not that I don't, but um, you ought to do what's right for you. Don't worry about me. I'll be fine. I mean, I'll miss you terribly, but um, I'll manage. Just wanted to make that clear. Don't do anything just to please me. There, that's settled. Man. Isn't it nice we can have a frank discussion about things like this? <laughs> Imagine, a few short months ago we barely knew each other, and here we are carrying on as if we've been together for years. It's surprising how people can become accustomed to just about anything, really. They come to depend on each other. Yeah. Well, I, I always lived on my own, of course, you know. Even when I was at home. Yeah. Well, mother never did much for me, you know. Well, her hands were pretty full, you know. Now with the cigarette, and bottle of scotch, you know. <laughs> uh, and then they packed me off to that dreadful school. Who knows, if you had been there, you know, you might have intervened on my behalf. <laughs> Mother decided I should become a priest of all things. Well, what else would you do with an 11-year-old transvestite? <laughs> it's what all queers grow up to be, she told me, matter of fact. <laughs> uh, I always think of it at this time of the year. I never that... Those dead first dead leaves start to fall, you know? That first cold gust of wind comes through. That cruel stone edifice. 
And those, those stern, tight-lipped nuns <laughs> with their bizarre, inexplicable catechism. You know? But you know, all at once, I began to feel at home. I mean, not being a Catholic, I had no idea that misery and self-loathing could actually be a religion. <laughs> and I went to confession every day. I mounted up impressive penances. <laughs> oh, believe me, I didn't commit all those sins, you know, but I thought, you know, given the opportunity, I might. Yeah. I raised humiliation and prostration into an art form. I spent whole weekends on my knees. <laughs> I even fashioned myself a little crown of thorns. <laughs> well, blackberry branches, really, you know. <laughs> a vow of silence. That wasn't enough for me. I took a vow of paralysis. <laughs> I once didn't move for 12 days. <laughs> well, naturally, it couldn't last. <laughs> it was obvious I wasn't a Catholic. The other boys would be in town shoplifting skin magazines, and I'd be punishing myself with a wooden ruler. <laughs> and the nuns gradually became suspicious. Uh, you know, I think religion is something that's in the blood, you know? Piety can be learned, but not true faith. Yeah. Well, eventually I was shipped off back home. I spent the, uh, the rest of the year employed in my father's tacky little magic shop. He was a manic depressive, you know. <laughs> oh, well, you would have known that, of course, I guess. I think I was the only one who didn't know it. <laughs> I thought it was normal for a person to dig their own grave in the backyard. <laughs> he, used to, he used to lock himself in the garage, you know, for three days at a time. Yeah. And once I peeked in just to see what he was doing, you know, and he was just sitting in the car there, motionless, with his hands on the wheel, just staring straight ahead, as if it was going somewhere in his mind. I, I, I quietly opened up the back door and I crept into the seat and I sat down behind him. I imagined we were going on a journey together, just the two of us. I mean, <laughs> I wasn't happy. I knew we weren't going anywhere, but I was satisfied. We weren't going anywhere together. <laughs> well, Mother eventually had him committed. <laughs> They'll be able to look after him, she would say to me. Lord knows I can't. I can't even look after myself. <laughs> well, fine, I thought. Who's looking after me? And you, you always thought I was odd. I know that. That was clear the one and only time you came to visit. The one and only time. And that outfit, incidentally, was not my idea. That was mother. She could never get over the fact that I was a boy. Neither could I, for that matter. <laughs> never could quite get the hang of it. <laughs> All that muscular thinking. Couldn't get your ball to save my life. <laughs> Why would I want to? I'd only have to throw it back. Woo! Can't imagine what that looked like. <laughs> You know, I, I thought you were in a dream, arriving in a taxi. Nobody had ever arrived in a taxi before. And the way you looked when you swung your legs out onto the sidewalk, one over the other, and how you held your hand out and waited for the driver to take it. And how you looked when you exited the taxi. Your hair was black and wild and beautiful. I just wanted to rush up and brush it. <laughs> I thought you had come to save me from my glamorless childhood. I was mistaken, of course. You looked at me as if you were studying a stool sample. <laughs> I didn't expect you to love me, you know. I wasn't stupid. I just hoped you could see through that hideous, acne-infested, painfully effeminate 13-year-old wearing that powder blue leisure suit thing, whatever it was, and mincing around in those buckled shoes like some grotesque nightclub act. <laughs> Do you think I wanted to play the ukulele for you? Do you think I chose Camp Town Races? None of it was my idea. I had better plans for my adolescence. I needed to get out of there. How can you call yourself an ant? Whenever the leaves turn color, I think of you getting back in that taxi and leaving, and then forgetting to say goodbye. Oh, yeah, <laughs> and then remembering to say goodbye, but forgetting my name. <laughs> Off to your next adventure in the Mediterranean or wherever. <laughs> there was plenty of room for me in that taxi, you know. I dreamed of you for months, for years. And what became of all my letters that I sent you? I mean, you must have received them. 
Well, that could have been the post office. I still haven't received my package. I seriously think of going into medicine. What do you think? I could do your autopsy if you like. Get to know you a little better. <laughs> I never liked the word survived. Too many perilous connotations. How about the outlived by her nephew? No? <laughs> Outlasted? Yeah, survived. It's traditional. Oh, wait a minute. We could say you left a legacy of love and kindness. Hmm. Maybe just a legacy of love might be better. <laughs> More alliterative. <laughs> Well, although we could just say you left a legacy. Yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> why should we drone on and on about your attributes? It's more precise to say you left. <laughs> <laughs> although that might sound like you went on vacation. Mm. Uh, I, I, well, but why would somebody put their vacation in the obituary? Mm. You know, it's more precise to say you're gone. Yeah. I mean, why mince words here? You're dead and gone. <laughs> I mean, who are we fooling anyway? <laughs> you're gone, you're gone, you're gone. <laughs> Anything else? <laughs> I'm, uh, <clears throat> I'm just going to be downstairs uh, <laughs> working on some, uh, Home improvements. about Christmas. <laughs> well, it's hard not to, you know. <laughs> what with everybody out there <laughs> already doing their Christmas shopping, you know, preparing the groundwork for their disappointments, <laughs> wrapping up all their unrealistic expectations, tying them with ribbon. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. People want so much from Christmas, you know. It's as if a single day could wipe away an entire year in its wake with a sudden flood of goodwill and kindness. <sighs> you know, when I worked at the bank, Auntie, uh, you remember the bank, the place I used to work at before I came here? They always gave us a lovely and thoughtful gift at Christmas time, a frozen turkey. <laughs> you know, I always envy turkeys. I can't think of a better way to spend Christmas than to be decapitated and stuffed with chestnuts. <laughs> well, as you can see, I've rigged up a couple of options here for you. Now, this may seem a little controversial, but um, we need to get past that, don't we? I mean, uh, we don't want to get into a moral quagmire here. It really should be up to the individual to decide when and how their life should end, right? Oh, I'm not talking about suicide. I don't mean that. This is more about um, going with the obvious. It's like when your condition deteriorates to that point, you know, when you no longer want to drag it out any longer, <laughs> when you're tired of me waiting, <laughs> when even one more day would be just one too many, <laughs> you have options. No pressure. It's all up to you. You press this switch over here for an electric shock, or you release this here for a massive blow to the head.
Now, I don't think you quite got the hang of this machine here yet, Auntie, so I drew you this little manual, all right? So now there's the switch over there, and that's the one that you press for the uh, shock. And then you release this over here for the blow to the head. That's all you have to do. Oh! 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 Oh!